Okay, so what, what I would like to do in this video is just go through the, the derivation for the heat equation on a uh, circular ring. The setup that we have, some sort of circular, circular ring, and um, if we will call this point here, just say this is x equals zero, so x will represent position on the ring, and if we go around the ring, kind of around in this direction, and go all the way back again, um, we will have completed one uh, circle. And we'll say that uh, the length of this, so the circumference of this ring is uh, one unit, um, and whatever units you're using, so that when x equals one, we're back into the same position here as when x was equal to zero. Now, the idea is that we can use Fourier series to try and solve for the distribution of heat or temperature on this ring. And um, we can kind of get a motivation for this because this is a periodic system and, and Fourier series are very good at describing periodic systems. And so, so it basically turns out that you do need Fourier series in order to solve this partial differential equation. I say partial because of course we have this symmetry in terms of space, um, but there is also a time factor as well. So if you heat up, say, just the, the top half of this ring, so you just make this top half very hot, and then say that this bottom half is very cold, um, then as over time, if we let the system relax, then over time uh, you'll end up with this temperature difference between hot and, and cold um, becoming uh, zero, so then there will be no temperature difference if you wait a long enough time. So the, the temperature on the ring is described both in terms of position on the ring and in terms of time. So as I say, we're going to use Fourier seri series to try and describe this system. Um, and this is actually kind of the opposite way that Fourier himself um, approached this, of course, because he came to understand Fourier series because of problems like this. Um, but we're doing the other way. We're starting, we're seeing the system. We know that Fourier series can describe periodic systems, and so we're going to try and use Fourier series to solve this system. So let's write out our equation for a Fourier series. So we'll have some temperature T, um, and I want to note that this, this is temperature, but this is relative temperature. So relative to the, the surrounding system, so the, the environment. So just keep, keep this in mind um, in this example, okay? And so we have our T of T, which is dependent on uh, both position and, and time, our temperature. And so this will be then for Fourier series. Now, we're, we're periodic in space, so I'm going to write the Fourier series in terms of uh, space periodicity. So our Fourier series goes from negative infinity to infinity, so sum over n, of some Fourier coefficients, um, which we'll do in terms of time, and then our periodic, we're per periodic in space, so we write the periodic part of this in terms of x, okay? If this had been some sort of system that was periodic in time, then maybe we could have considered uh, i2 pi nt. Uh, but this is periodic in space, so we're going to, to describe the periodicity in space in terms of this um, exponential, because cosines and sines can be built up by complex exponentials like this, right? So this is why we have an, a complex exponential in terms of uh, space. Um, and then we're going to include time as well, so then we include these Fourier coefficients in terms of time. And then going into the Fourier coefficients, we have C of, actually I'll write it up here, C of n t, as usual, is the integral over the, the period of the system, which is period 1, so we go from 0 to 1, of uh, e to the negative i 2 pi nx, times the temperature, which is dependent on position and time. 
So what I'd like to do first is take the derivative of both sides. Um, and this is required in order to f obtain the final result. So we take the derivative of Cn with respect to time. Um, and then take the derivative here. Well, this the exponential doesn't depend on time, so that's just it's just a constant in this derivative in this uh, taking the derivative here, two pi n x, and then we want the derivative of the temperature with respect to time. So I'll just write t subscript t in this case. So this means the the derivative of temperature with respect to time. Okay. Now, we want to relate the rate of change of temperature with time with the rate of change of temperature with space. And we're going to use the diffusion relation to achieve this. So in this video, I, I want to focus on the derivation. So I don't want to talk about the physics behind this in, at the moment. But if you have temperature, um, so the rate, the, the rate of change of temperature with time, so the first derivative of the temperature with time is equal to or is proportional to the rate of change of temperature with position, uh, the second derivative of that rather. So it's the rate of change of the rate of change of temperature with position. Um, and th this is, so if we just, instead of having this proportionality, we just set a constant. So we'll do this equals um, just some constant k. And th this is a, the standard diffusion relation. So um, just as a, an example, if we have temperature in Kelvin, maybe this would be Kelvin per second. And then here we have uh, Kelvin per um, square meter. Th th this is a constant k. This is Kelvin. Th these are different things, right? So then the units for k would have to be um, meters squared uh, per second. So this, this is a uh, diffusion coefficient. And as I say, I don't want to focus on this, this too much now, but this diffusion relation essentially allows us to relate the, um, the, the gradient of the temperature with respect to time with the second differential of the temperature with respect to position. So I'm going to substitute this in here. So our Cn, C prime n t is again this integral from 0 to 1 of this exponential e to the negative i 2 pi n x. But then instead of this t t t here, I'm going to write k t x x here. And in fact, just for simplicity, instead of k, instead of k here, I, I'm going to I'm going to say that k equals one half, and the the reason for this is because the numbers are prettier later in the derivation. Um, but obviously, if you're thinking about diffusion through through some sort of metal or um, any sort of material, uh, the diffusion constant here will will vary depending on on the material. But we'll set it to a half just for now. So this is going to be, we can in fact take, well, let's put it here. So this is then a half times the temperature, the second differential with respect to position of the temperature, dx, OK? So now we've got this almost entirely in terms of position. But of course, this, this temperature does depend on time as well. But we have lots of x's now. So and if you think what we're aiming for, what we want to know is this this t here. So the the temperature is a function of uh, position and, and time. So to recover to get to this, we now want to integrate twice to obtain the temperature, which is not not a differential of, of x twice. So what I want to do is use uh, integration by parts. So we know the integral of uh, u dv is u v minus the integral of v du, OK? So in our case here, we're going to set u is equal to uh, e to the negative i 2 pi nx. 
and so du will be well let's let's just call this exponential again here and then I'll just write an x down here to signify that we're taking the first derivative of of this exponential okay and then dv is uh, txx so then v is well the integral of this will just will just take off one x so continuing on on here just so I have more room so c c dash of n so the derivative of this Fourier coefficient is so u dv so we have e to the negative i 2 pi n x and then dv is this so this is t x x dependent on position and time and this is going to be evaluated between the boundary conditions so between 1 and 0 and we subtract away from this uh, okay I've lost my half here so there's half and here's half so subtract away from this the integral of v du so v is let's do du first so this is e x negative i 2 pi n x and then v so this is t x which depends on position and time okay and now let's do this one more time so again in now we have u is e to the negative i 2 pi nx so just uh, sorry uh, deri derivative with respect to x right so du in this case is going to be another derivative so it's actually e x x um, so it's the second differential with respect to position of this exponential and then uh, v or dv is going to be tx and so v is uh, just t so now we've now we've got our t into this situation so that that's we're, we're getting there so our c dashed n of t is all of this And then we have our minus one half, and then uh, uv. So we have e first differential of this exponential, and then v is obviously temperature. And then this will be evaluated again between 0 and 1. And then we want to subtract away from this. Um, but we're doing subtraction. We have a negative sign here, so this will become positive. Um, we have our half again. The integral from 0 to 1. Let's do du first. So this is e. dx. So now let's evaluate some of these terms. So if I call this, let's call this term 1 and then we'll call this term 2 and then we'll do this as term 3. So for number 1 we have a half times, well e to the negative i 2 pi n because x is 1 and then we have the second differential of the temperature evaluated at x equals 1 and then we subtract from this or e to the 0 is 1 
So this is just t, the second differential of, of temperature with respect to position for x at x equals 0. Well, we know that e to the negative i 2 pi n is a cosine of negative 2 pi n plus i sine negative 2 pi n. So, so n is an integer, so any so cosine of, of 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, and so on, this is always going to be 1, so this is just 1. And then similarly, sine of uh, 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, this is always going to be 0. So this is just equal to 1. So we have a half of t xx 1 minus t xx at uh, 0. Um, and but we know that if I go up to the to the top here, we know that um, at x equals 1 and x equals 0, this is actually the same position. So our value here, so the, this, this and this are equal, right? So these will cancel. So um, you end up with uh, 0, OK? So the first term is 0. And so now looking at the second, second term, and in fact, before I do that, I've just noticed this, of course, is uh, x, the first differential of temperature um, with respect to position rather than the second differential. But uh, obviously, these numbers are still the same, so this will still be 0. If we just continue with the second term here in a very similar way, this is negative a half, and this should be a 2. And again, if I take a look at the if I actually do this differential, the first differential of this exponential e to the negative i 2 pi nx, first differential of this is just these constants at the front times the original exponential. So in addition to my negative 1 half here, I can, I can write out these constants as well. And then I have this e to the negative, two, uh, negative i 2 pi n x is 1, so we'll just leave it like this, times the temperature, oops, times the temperature at position 1 times t, and then subtract away from this e to the well, it's going to be e to the 0, because x is 0, and then the temperature at position 0 and time t. And then by a similar argument to before, so, so this e to the 0 is 1, but then from this argument here, we know that e to the negative i 2 pi n is also 1, so this we don't need to write this. And then just as, as we showed here, as we thought here, the position 1 and position 0 are the same. So this is essentially subtracting itself away. So this will be 0. So both of these terms, uh, 1 and 2, they both evaluate to 0. So what we're left with now is, if I write out the full equation again, we have our half and then the integral over the entire period the second differential with respect to position of this exponential. Multiplied by the temperature. So we've now got a nice expression with our temperature here that, that we're actually trying to find as, as a function of position and time. So if I go ahead and evaluate this double differential, we end up with negative 2 pi squared n squared, and then this integral again.
And this integral now should be very familiar to you because this is the same. If I come up, come back up here, the original integral defining our Fourier coefficient CNT is given exactly by this, which is what we have now down here below. This here is simply CNT. So now we have a nice differential equation that the, the differential of CNT with respect to time t is given by these constants multiplied by CNT, this the uh, Fourier coefficient for time t, at time t. So I just need to rearrange this. So we have 1 over CNT dCNT, taking the integral of this. And this is equal to negative 2 pi squared n squared um, dt, the integral of this. And then if I integrate both sides, we have log of CNT is equal to negative 2 pi squared n squared t plus some constants, which I shall just call k here. And taking the exponential of both sides, we have the Fourier coefficient CNT is given by well, it's exponential of these, and then I, I'm just going to take this out the front, and so I'll just call this k. This k is slightly different to this k, of course, but it's just another constant. So now we have an expression for the Fourier coefficients, but we need to know, it would be nice to know what this k is and how to obtain it. So if we think, well, what happens when t is 0? Well, CN0 is equal to whatever this k is multiplied by e to the 0, which is just 1. So this k represents the Fourier coefficient for t equals 0. So we can rewrite CNT as CN0 times this exponential. And we know from earlier that the Fourier coefficients are calculated, again referring to this equation here, are calculated, so, so the Fourier coefficient is given by this integral. Um, and so if we want to know what Cn0 is when t equals 0, we just need to evaluate this for when t equals 0, because this will then give us Cn0. So, so then this means that our CN0 here is given by this original integral for the Fourier coefficients, which is e to the negative i 2 pi n x times the temperature at x. And instead of t, now we have t equals 0, so it's just x, uh, x0 dx. And so this is basically it. So now we can rewrite our initial equation for temperature, which we had as the sum from n is negative infinity to infinity of C Fourier coefficient CNT e to the i 2 pi n x. And again, just to remind you, this, this original equation is, is this original equation that we wrote right at the beginning. So it was this. We started with this assumption, right? So I'm, I'm just rewriting this equation down at the bottom. But now, now we know what CNT is. So our temperature distribution for any given position in time is CN0 times 
times this exponential, which depends on time. Oops, I've, read, I've written a, this is not t squared, of course, this is just t. And then this e to the i 2 pi n x. So now what we've been able to do is express our temperature at any position and time on the ring as a Fourier series. And if we want to know what CN0 is, we just have to evaluate this integral here. And CN0 arises from this initial temperature distribution at t equals 0 on the ring. So if we know the initial temperature distribution, we can obtain the Fourier coefficient for CN0, and then we can put it into our sum here, and then sum um, o up to a sufficiently large n to have the accuracy that we would like to obtain the temperature at any position or time on the ring. I think that's quite a, a powerful application of Fourier series.